Hey guys, Ryan here, and I want to talk about something that's kind of cool. So, I've been listening and studying this guy named Barry Harris. He's a jazz piano player and a great jazz teacher, just a music teacher in general. There's a lot of footage of him on YouTube teaching at different colleges and schools and clinics and stuff from, I think, like the late 80s, early 90s. And during one of these videos I was watching, he made a just a real quick comment about playing wrong notes. And he says, you know, when you play something that's wrong, that it forces the audience to listen because they hear it. They go, what in the world is that? Because they know it's not right. And it creates a lot of tension. And, you know, music is really nothing more than creating a lot of tension and then kind of releasing the tension. A lot of peaks and valleys, kind of a motion ride. It's a roller coaster kind of thing. So the idea is that you have to learn how to play the wrong notes at the right time. And lucky enough, we have a tool that helps us do this, and that's called the diminished scale. Diminished chords, you know, everything diminished. So even if I just play a diminished chord right here, the intervals of that chord already build lots of tension. And I can start to move it around. Or I could choose to play a little diminished riff diminished a lick. You know, all sorts of cool little things I can do. So say I'm playing just like a little 12 bar or something in the key of A. Playing A here. And then I go to my 4 chord which is D. Then I throw a diminished in before bringing it back around. kind of something like that. I can add that diminished in. So that little chord right there, that little diminished chord, I'll kind of spell it out for you here. Naming diminished chords is weird. There's a lot of, uh, you know, depending on how I use this is what it's going to be called. I would call it a D sharp diminished just because I'm going out of a D chord. Other people may call it an F sharp diminished or, the list goes on and on. Somebody will probably correct me though on what this actually is. But this is how I play it. I use my pointer finger here on the fourth fret of the D string. And then my ring finger goes on the G string of the fifth fret. And the middle finger hits the fourth fret of the B string. And then my pinky hits the high E down here on the fifth fret. And you can move that chord up every fourth fret it repeats. So you're playing the same notes, they're just kind of revolving around. Something kind of like that. So I'll use that if I'm playing like an, just a 12 bar. Something like that. Or I may choose to do a little riff. So if I'm, say I'm soloing in, in A and over the same kind of progression. chord try, try it again so I'll go in A D D diminished you know so on do a little turnaround or whatever to end it but that little lick right there it's a real simple little diminished run. So I'm starting on the 6th fret of the A string and I'm going 6, 9, then I'm dropping down to the D string and I'm going 7, 10, then I'm dropping down to the G and I'm going 8, 11, and then I'm finishing here on the 10th fret of the B. And you could keep going. It just follows a pattern. It's that same pattern. So that's like 10 on the B string, 13 on the B string, and then 11 on the high E, 14 on the high E. Something like that if you wanted to go all the way up with it. But that's the cool thing about diminished. It's, it sounds wrong. It's going to grab people's attention. People are going to listen to it and go, whoa, what is that? But it's not wrong. And it resolves. It brings it back around. And that's that's what's going to make people go, huh? Ah, like that. So if you have any questions, any comments, let us know. You know, 
Let us know down below by leaving a comment, liking the video. Be sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we will see you next time.